let's continue with the next part of the tutorial, which is the basic usage. So for this part, it's important that you make sure that the pre-installed software stack that we have in the container image um, is available. So for this, we need to run the module use command that is shown in the slide here. This is mentioned throughout the tutorial a couple of times, but we can already do this here. So we run module use slash easy build modules all. We now run module avail, you should see a bunch of modules already pre-installed for us. That will come in handy. We have stuff like CMake already installed. We have a GCC recent version 9.3 installed. We have a Perl installation and a Python installation that was performed by EasyBuild. And a whole bunch of other tools and libraries that we have, including a full uh, FOSS toolchain, the latest version 2028. So make sure you run this module use command and that you see a bunch of software pop up in module avail, which is important for the next part of the tutorial. So this part will cover the basic usage of easy builds. This part here, which is a fairly long part and it does uh, include a couple of exercises at the end, which you should try and solve yourself. So the basic usage of EasyBuild or the workflow of EasyBuild is um, you use the EB command as I already showed and you specify the name of one or more easy config files. And often you also enable the robot option to enable dependency resolution and we'll get to that in a bit. When you do this, EasyBuild will install the software and make sure that all the required dependencies are installed first. Um, And here it says, uh, and I am, maybe you want to inspect the installation procedure before actually running it. And we'll show you how to do that in this part. So first of all, specifying easy config files. How do we do that? Well, we give the name or the location of easy config files to the EB command. That's the most common way of telling EasyBuild to install a particular software package. There's alternative methods like the dash dash software name option, but these are not really used uh, too much and they are not that easy to work with. Uh, so usually people specify the name of the or the location of easy config files. There's a couple of ways to do this. It can be a relative or an absolute path to a config file, so the full location. You can just specify the name of an easy config file, or you can specify the name or, the, or at least the path to a directory that has easy config files in it. So, so these are subtle differences. Um, we have an example here that hopefully clarifies it a little bit. So this is the type of directory we have. We have in our current directory, a file named example one, a file named example two. So both of these are easy config files. Um, we have a directory, some depths, which has two easy config files in them. So usually easy config files have a .eb extension, but that's not strictly required. It's just smart to do that because then you can easily tell they are easy config files. Um, it has a list.txt file, which we will ignore in this case, and a subdirectory more depths with another easy config file. If we now run um, this command with easy build, so this has a couple of arguments. Here we give the name of an easy config file that's included in the easy build installation. So easy build will first check in the current directory, is this file there? If it's not there, it will go and search in the robot search path for this file, and it will it should find it there since it's part of the easy build installation. The next one, it will do it again, a check in the current directory. It will find this file, um, and then it will be happy. It will pick it up and parse it as an easy config file. Same for this one, except here we are using an absolute path to the file, which in this case works as well, since the assumption here is that all these files are in the home directory. And then the fourth argument is a directory, some depths, which has easy config files in them. This will make easy build scan the directory recursively and pick up all the files that have a .eb extension in them. So this has to be done with some care. If this is a, a top level directory with thousands of directories in there, easy build will scan all of them. So this is something to do with some care, I would say, but if you know it's just a directory with directly easy config files in them, it's okay to do this. 
So this explains this in detail. Um, the names of easy config files um, do not matter as long as you specify them to the EP command itself. So the example one here, for example, this works fine if this is an easy config file um, because it's specified directly to the EB command. So easybuilt will find this file um, and use it as an easy config file. Usually easy config files have a .eb extension, but that's not strictly required as long as you're specifying them to the EB command. Whenever easybuilt needs to find easy config files that are not directly specified, however, the naming of the easy config files is very important. So easybuilt will not open any file it runs into. It will do the searching for easy config files on the name base. So whenever it needs an easy config file to resolve a dependency, it will look for a, a file with a very specific name. So that's where the naming is important. The naming of easy config files follows this scheme. So it has name dash software name, I should say, dash software version. The a toolchain label, which is basically the name of the toolchain dash, the toolchain version, and then a version suffix, which is an additional label you can give to an easy config file, followed by the .eb extension. As you will see in the coming parts of the tutorial, um, all easy config files that we will use have this structure to them. And we recommend also to use the same naming scheme for the local easy config files you, you create yourself. So one of the first things you will need to do when uh, you want to install a particular software package using EasyBuild is to search for an easy config file that matches your requirements. For this, you can use eb-search or just eb-s for short. There's a subtle difference between these two. One of them will give the full location to the easy config files that match the, the search pattern, while the other one um, gives a more condensed output. So when searching for easy config files, EasyBuild will uh, consider all the directories in the robot search path. So remember from our show config output, the robot search path is this uh, list of paths, which is in this case only one path. Um, so in this case, dash dash search will only consider the, this location when looking for easy config files. When we do this, for example, for TensorFlow 2.2.0, using dash dash search, we get two hits, um, one with the FOSS 2019B toolchain, another one with the FOSS CUDA toolchain. So this is the GPU able um, installation of TensorFlow. And we do the same thing with dash capital S. Um, then we get the same easy config files, of course, but the output is a little bit different. So here it sees there's a common prefix to these easy config files, so it, it sort of defines a variable for the prefix and then only gives the name of the easy config file. So it's a, a little bit easier on the eyes or to copy paste. Um, important here, the case, uh, the search is case insensitive. So even though I did TensorFlow all in lowercase, it's able to find easy config files that have a capital T and a capital F in the TensorFlow software name. So searching is case insensitive, but whenever we use these easy config files, the casing is important. So when EasyBuild checks for files or when the robot checks for easy config files or searches for easy config files, the, the uh, casing of the names of the file names is important. We can also give a particular pattern rather than just uh, a regular string. So for example, if we want to look for easy config files for open foam, um, where the version starts with a digit and which uses the FOSS 2019B toolchain, we can use this query. So we have to be a little bit careful here because we have a star and a small regular expression. We have to wrap this in single quotes to avoid that bash um, goes and play with this. So when we run this, we get two easy config files for open foam version six and version seven. Whenever you do a search with EasyBuild, you will see a line or at least a sufficiently recent version of EasyBuild, you will see a line like this pop up. Um, so EasyBuild has a, a search index um, that is automatically created for the easy config files included 
with easy build, which speeds up the search a bit. So this directory now holds almost 10,000 easy config files. And when, when this directory is on the shared file system, it may make the search a bit slow. So that's why we added um, a search index as well. And you can create your own search index for additional locations um, where you have easy config files located. There's more details on this in the easy build documentation behind this link for the search index. Then when we know um, the name of the easy config file, we want to install, we may want to take a closer look at it first before uh, letting EasyBuild install it. For, for this, we can use the show EC, which is short for easy config um, option. So EB show EC, and then the name of one or more easy config files. If you want to, let me pipe this through less. So this shows us the contents of the easy config file. So this is an easy config file for BZIP um, 106, which is not a surprise based on the name of the easy config file. It shows the metadata, the homepage, and the description. It shows the tool chain, in this case, the system tool chain that would be used, um, where it would download the sources from, what the source file would be named like, and here it's using a constant that we will use later as well. This even includes a patch file for adding a package config file to the installation. Um, it gives the build options for the build command and so on. So all of these details we will go through um, when we get to writing easy config files ourselves. But the show EC option is handy uh, for checking the contents of an easy config file before you start playing with it. Maybe you want to double check it's actually the vzip you're, you're after and not just any other software package named vzip. Another thing you may want to do uh, before installing software is checking the dependencies. So this is where it's important that you have run module use, easy build modules all to pick up on the installed software we have in the container image. Um, so one way to check for dependencies is using a dry run, which is eb dash dash dry run. Or again, we have a shorthand for this, which is eb minus capital D. So again, here you give easy build the name of an easy config file and you use minus capital D when running this. And when you do this on this easy config file, which is one for SAM tools, 1.10 uh, installed with the GCC 9.3 compiler tool chain. When we run this, we quickly get an answer back. Easy build will give us a long list of dependencies, including the tool chain itself and all of its dependencies. And everything that's already installed will be marked with X here in the output. So in this case, it's good news since all of these are X. The toolchain itself, as we have seen, the module for the toolchain is already installed. So this is marked as X. You have a dependency and curses here, which is also installed as X, uh, also marked as X since it's already installed. But Sam Tools itself is not installed yet. So this is still blank here. So in this case, we know that all the dependencies uh, that are required to install SAM tools are already in place in this environment. So this is a long list of dependencies, which is a bit hard to stare at. We can also ask EasyBuild to only tell us about missing dependencies. So let's let me do this on the SAM tools one. So dash dash missing or dash capital M. In this case, as we've seen, only samples itself is missing and everything else is already installed. So this is a bit more um, easy to look at maybe. The example here does the same thing for H5Py. So we're, here we're using an easy config file for H5Py version 2.10.0. In this case, with the FOSS 2020A toolchain and with Python 3.8.2. If we run this, EasyBuild will tell us that we have two installations missing, of course, H5Py itself, and also the package config tool, um, or rather the Python wrappers for the package config tool, which are required as a build dependency for installing H5Py. So we're still two modules missing to have this H5Py installation in place. Next to checking dependencies, maybe we also want to get a closer look uh, or take a closer look at how easy build will exactly ins uh, perform an installation. So, and we may want to do this quickly 
not just waiting for minutes or maybe even hours for the installation to run and then check afterwards what it did. So for this, there's a separate option which we call extended dry run. So it's a bit of a weird name maybe, um, but it was for lack of a better one that we could come up with. There is a shorthand as well, eb-x. This will basically run through the whole installation um, and just produce output without actually doing anything at all. So this will run in seconds and this will give a quick report on what EasyBuild would do um, if it installs this software. If you do this with the boost easy config file we show here. So we run again eb command, the name of the easy config file and we add dash x to tell it to do the extended dry run. Let me pipe this through less because this will generate quite a bit of output. And we can scroll through this a bit. So here it tells us which easy config file it's picking up. So the robot search mechanism has found this easy config file as we specified it. It knows the full name. It tells you here that the installation procedure reports on may diverge a little bit. And this is covered in the, uh, in the text here in the tutorial as well. Um, it tells us which easy block will be used, where the easy block is located in case you want to check the code, which module it will in, would install, um, which URLs it will consider for downloading the sources. And in this case, it doesn't have the source, whoops, it doesn't have the source yet because it says it will download this source file to this location. If it would have found the source file, it would have tell the, told us source file is found at this location on the file system. So in this case, it still needs to be downloaded. There are no patch files in this particular installation. For the checksum, it will use this checksum to verify, um, verify that the source file is correct. It will extract the source file it will prepare the build environment by loading the toolchain module and loading um, the modules for the dependencies. And this should result in a list of loaded modules that looks like this. So remember, it does all of this without actually doing it. So it, it's quite smart to figure out all these details. Then it shows us how the build environment will be defined, which corresponds to defining a bunch of environment variables, which is a long list including CXX, CXX flags, and a couple of familiar ones, and maybe some additional ones which are less familiar. It will show us how to run the configure step, how to run the build step, which is a whole bunch of output because it's passing uh, link flags here corresponding to each of the dependencies. It will tell us about testing. In this case, there is no dedicated testing step, it seems. The installation itself, looks like it's skipped here but it's act that's actually because the boost easy block doesn't output anything in dry run mode about how it will do the actual installation so that's maybe something to fix and it will perform a sanity check by looking for these particular files and this directory which are expected to be there in the installation before declaring success when it does see all of this it will generate a module file using these paths that it will consider for updating environment variables. And it also gives an idea of how the module file will look like. So it will have load statements for the tool chain and the dependencies, a bunch of prepend path statements in the module file, a couple of additional ones for setting environment variables, and then it will wrap up with cleaning up. And the same note again that this installation procedure may diverge a little bit from what will actually happen, depending on what EasyBuild runs into when doing the actual installation. So as you can tell, we got this output in a matter of seconds, and it takes us longer to scroll through the output than it took to generate it. Um, so this is a very good way to get a quick idea of what EasyBuild uh, would do, given the easy config file that we passed it. And again, here, this note says, um, depending on files or environment variables or output of commands that are actually run during an actual installation, EasyBuild may take a different path in the EasyBlock. Um, so that's certainly something to take into account. It's not guaranteed to be 100% correct, the output you get here, but it does give a good idea. Then let's try to actually install software rather than just looking at what would happen. So here, remember the SAM tools example that we had before there was only one dependency missing, which is, or one installation missing, which is Samtools itself. 
So when we run the eb command and only give the easy config file name, it easy build goes ahead and installs SAM tools for us. This may take, I think, a minute or two because SAM tools does involve quite a bit of source files that need to be compiled. So it will go ahead and do this for us. Once it completes the installation procedure, you should see output like this. So one line for each of the steps that easy build performed during the installation. And it should end with a completed message. The 11 seconds here is a, is a bit optimistic. Um, in the AWS environment, we have a lot, a lot less resources, but it should finish in about a minute or two. And that's really all there is to it. You give EB the name of the easy config file, you hit enter, um, and then everything happens automatically for you. So in this case, it completed the installation. Remember, we had EasyBuild configured to install stuff in EasyBuild in dollar EasyBuild slash home. So if you look in modules all, you should see a module for SAM tools and this particular version. And in the software directory, you will also have a SAM tools directory there for this particular version of SAM tools, which has the actual installation. So is it that easy? Always? Well, mostly. Um, it depends a bit on the context. So if you have a bunch of dependencies missing, like for example, for this Bowtie software package, with dash M, we can check which dependencies are missing. We have two missing here. If we now ask EasyBuild to install Bowtie for us, like we had before, this will actually fail after um, EasyBuild downloads the sources which will hopefully not fail in this case. Um, the installation will fail because the TBB dependency is still missing. So this one is not there. And here, of course, it's failing on the source files. That's not fun. So there's, an, there's a problem with source for search, source forge, which I guess is the issue we're hitting here. Um, let me see if I can locate an alternative location for the sources. So I can pull them in here. The name of the source file is this zip ball. So usually EasyBuild does an automatic download. And of course, this is hosted on SourceForge. Maybe this one gives us an alternative link. that we can try. This is maybe not a bad example. If you run into issues like this, that was a bit quick. Yeah, this is an HTML document, not what we need. Okay, so I'll, I'll divert to a different example since the sources cannot be downloaded currently. Um, let me see if I can find another example. So what, what was I trying to show here? Um, there was a dependency missing. So if we just run eb with the easy config file name, um, the installation should fail after fetching the sources because the tbb dependency is missing. So you'll see output like this, missing modules for dependencies, which is copy pasted here, tbb is missing. Um, in this case, the fix is quite simple. We have to enable the dependency resolution by using the dash dash robot option or the dash r option for short. So in this case, um, EasyBuild will first handle the Bowtie installation. So it will build and install the TBB installation first, and then it will get to installing Bowtie itself on top of that once all the dependencies are in place. So remember when you hit an issue like this, where it says missing modules for dependencies, you probably just forgot to enable the robot mode. And if it takes a while for installing a software package and you're only getting very high level output like configuring and building, you may be wondering what is actually going on in the background. Um, this is actually the case for Bowtie if the download works at, at least. Um, you will see it's sitting there in the building step for quite a while. And you may wonder what's actually going on. So for this, we have the trace mode. And I can maybe show this for the TBB example, which I think is not hosted on SourceForge. 
Search force. Like this. So let me run this with trace mode enabled. Just to give you a feeling of what it does. So now we're getting a, a whole lot more output. Um, when running a particular command, it's not only giving us building, but it's also giving us details about which command is actually running, in which directory it is running, when it was started, and it even gives us a temporary log file to check the output of this particular command. So we can follow um, on what it is doing. And eventually it completes and it gives us a good idea of uh, what the output or what the sanity check was checking for. So this is the trace output, uh, which gives us more details about what's actually going on in the background while EasyBuild is installing the software. Um, it not only gives us information about the build commands, but also the sanity check gives some more details. In the case of Bowtie, it will tell us that we're looking for a Bowtie um, binary, a Bowtie build binary, an inspect binary, and a couple of non-empty directories as well. So once we have installed software, um, if you have the Bowtie sources, you will have installed three packages up until now, SAM tools. TBB and Bowtie 2 itself. So how do we now use this software? So remember we have the software in our home directory, home easy build. We have the modules subdirectory here and the software subdirectory. So the actual software is located here. So we have the SAM tools, we have easy build itself from the bootstrap before and the TBB installation. How do we now actually use this software, and I guess I was also using Bowtie as an example here. So this again goes back to uh, show config so we can remember where software is being installed, um, which is basically what I'm doing here, checking with LS where stuff goes. If we check in the modules directory, we will see separate uh, subdirectories for bioinformatics software, for development tools, for libraries, but all the, all the modules we generate are also located in the slash all subdirectory. To actually use the software, um, we need to make sure that the modules tool is aware of where the software is installed. So if we now check for module avail send tools, for example, uh, we, we have this already in our module part. So we ran the modules to module use command before um, because this home easy build modules all is already in our module path. If this is not the case for you, you should run module use home easy build modules all. Since this is the location where we are installing module files, the modules tool needs to be aware of this location. With that in place, we can check for both SAM tools and TBB in this case. So we see both these modules installed. And if we have the both bow tie sources, we should have bow tie as well. And maybe I think this one was installed after the configuration part, which is a, a quick installation with the system tool chain, which I haven't done here in the demo. So to actually use the installation, we have to load the corresponding module. Let me do it here for SAM tools. So we do module load and the name of the SAM tools module. And now I have to take a quick peek what's actually there in the installation so we can check which commands provided by Bowtie. Home, easy build, software, ah, SAM tools, not bow tie. One ten. And here in the bin directory, so for example, we have the SAM tools command, which may have a dash dash version option like this. 
So because we have loaded the SAM tools module, this one, we now have the SAM tools command also available. If we check with which, we can tell um, that the shell is able to find the SAM tools command in our home directory, home easy build, software SAM tools version, and then bin SAM tools. That's the location of the actual binary. If we unload the SAM tools module, and then try again. We have lost the SAM tools command because it's no longer um, an active, actively loaded module. So the example here shows this for bowtie where we don't have the bowtie command until we load the bowtie module. And from there on, we do have the bowtie command available and we can run dash dash version on it. When you have loaded a bunch of modules, so module list currently shows uh, the, still the modules loaded for the tool chain and the dependencies of SAM tools. If you want to reset, start over, you can unload modules like I did for SAM tools. Or when you just want to start from a clean slate, you can run module purge, which will unload everything you've loaded before and starts from a clean slate. So this is one of the reasons we didn't want to have EasyBuild itself as a module um, because then we have to make sure we reload the EasyBuild module after running module purge. Stacking of software, this is a small section that basically says you can build additional software on top of other software, which is exactly what we're doing here actually because, so let me load the SAM tools module again. If we check where SAM tools is, we can see it's in our home directory, which is where we have self-installed this. But if we, for example, check where GCC is located, which is the tool chain compiler we are using, uh, we can see it's in slash easy build software. So this is part of the pre-installed software stack in the container environment. And we this is this may be a location where we don't have write access to. So even though this is not software we installed ourselves, we can still lever leverage it for doing our own installations. So you can easily stack software on top of each other. You don't have to reinstall everything um, in order to install SAM tools or any other tool you're interested in. As long as you have a compiler tool chain and maybe a bunch of dependencies like Python and Perl already pre-installed for you, you can just leverage those and build what is missing uh, based on what you need. So here there are a couple of hands-on exercises uh, that work you through the workflow. And most of them are fairly simple. Um, so hopefully you can spend, let's say about 10 minutes to walk through them before we continue with the next section, which is uh, a troubleshooting part. So please take a look at the exercises here and try to work them out yourself before we continue. Meanwhile, if there are any additional questions, people who are helping out can raise them to me. So I can quickly answer them before we continue. Well, somebody's passing me a question. Um, you set the build environment by loading module files are using the same module outside of EasyBuild to let users employ the software. So when EasyBuild prepares um, the build environment, when it's installing a particular software package, for example, SAM tools, it will load both the compiler toolchain, the module for the compiler toolchain, and the modules for all of the dependencies. Then it will go ahead and do the installation. And in the generated module file for the installation, it will again load the compiler toolchain and the dependencies, the runtime dependencies. Um, also during the sanity check, before EasyBuild runs the sanity check, uh, which often involves running small commands like dash dash help or dash dash user, um, EasyBuild will actually load the module just like a user would and then run the commands just like a user would. So that's a way, an easy way to uh, make sure that the software seems to be functional. 
So we usually don't run extensive tests um, in the sanity check, but some quick commands that give some idea of how well the installation is working uh, are being run. So I hope that clarifies that question a little bit. I don't want to stall too long here um, waiting for exercises. So I hope everything is going well in terms of working on exercises. Let's take a quick look at what we have here. So the first exercise is to make installed software available, which we have covered with, in our case, the SAM tools example. So here, of course, make sure that you're using um, the pre-installed software stack so you don't have to reinstall everything from scratch. So run this module use command to make sure you're picking up the modules that are installed in slash easy build. To search for easy config files, let me re wipe my environment here. And run this side by side. So when searching for easy config files, we can use eb search. And in this case, we want gromax 219.4. We can use the long version dash dash search or the corresponding shorthand dash capital S, which gives us a more condensed output. So this is one easy config file that is part of the easy build installation for Gromax 219.4. Then to check for dependencies, here we are asked um, which dependencies are missing to install a particular version of the Petsy software package when using the 2008-2020A version of the FOSS toolchain. So first of all here, um, we'll have to look for an easy config file that matches this. So we'll do Petsy 3.12.4. Uh, the toolchain should be in there as well. So we'll do dot star the name of the toolchain and the version of the toolchain. And we'll wrap this in single quotes to avoid that bash starts playing around with the dot star here. If we do this, we get exactly one hit. So we have an easy config file for Petsy 3.12.4 with this toolchain and also for the particular version of Python. Now the question is here, which dependencies are missing? So either we use EB minus capital D or dash dash dry run, which is the long version for this. But this would give us an overview of all dependencies, including uh, the toolchain and the dependencies of dependencies and so on. So this will be quite a bit of output. Or we can just run dash dash missing or minus capital M for short to only get a list of the missing dependencies. When we do this for this Petsy easy config file, we get an answer back that seven out of 75 modules are still missing. A number of important dependencies for Petsy like Metis and Boost, Sweet Sparse, Hyper are not installed yet. So all of these six have to be installed first before EasyBuild can continue and install Petsy. Then the next exercise is the dry run mechanism. Um, here we are asked to figure out um, the actual command that EasyBuild will run to install uh, the GNU scientific library using this easy config file. So here we get the easy config file, we don't have to search for it. And to, to figure out how EasyBuild would install something, we use the extended dry run mode or uh, just dash, dash lowercase x for short. And pipe this through less is a good idea since it generates a lot of output. When we do this and we scroll down a little bit or we look for install, deeper down in the output, we see during the installation step, EasyBolt will first create the installation directory and remove it if it's already there. And during the actual installation step, it will just run make install um, from what looks like the build directory. So that's basically answering the first part of the question here. 
And the second part, it asks which binaries will EasyBuild check for to sanity check the installation. Um, for this, you have to scroll down a little bit further to the sanity check part, which is here. So the binaries that EasyBuild will check for are these three, GSL config, GSN, GSL histogram, and GSL randest. So EasyBuild expects all three of these binaries to be available in the installation. If one of these is missing, EasyBuild will consider the installation to have failed and it will stop um, the installation. It will not generate a module file for it. If everything that is specified here is in place, then EasyBuild assumes the installation went as was expected. And then here to actually install software. So here we are asked to install H5Py and all of the missing dependencies on top of Python 3.8. And to do this in slash temp user easy build while leveraging the already installed software from slash easy build. So we'll start with the last part, leveraging the software that's already installed in slash easy build that just having the modules visible so, which means they pop up in module avail is good enough. We don't have to do anything special for that. To install H5Py, we first have to locate an easy config file for it. It says H5Py for Python 3.8. So let's make sure our easy config file includes this Python version. This is the name of the easy config file we will need. We will pass this to the eb command. Um, we need to make sure all missing dependencies are also installed. So let's check on that first. So with dash dash missing, we can check which dependencies are still missing. In this case, it's package config and of course h5py itself. So hopefully that doesn't take too long and hopefully the download doesn't fail on us. To make sure it installs package config before it tries installing h5py, we use the dash dash robot or just dash r for short to enable dependency resolution. So here it goes and installs package config first. So that's quick. Um, this installation completed and then it continues with h5py itself. Uh, this is taking a bit long, so let me cancel it, control C, because this build step, I want to figure out what it's actually doing there. So let me also enable trace mode with dash dash trace. If we enable trace mode, we'll get some more information about what's actually going on. Here we see it preparing the build environment by loading modules for build dependencies and runtime dependencies and the toolchain itself. And then during the build step, so this is where it seems to be hanging. Hopefully it's doing some useful work here by running this command, Python setup by configure with MPI support enabled, passing the location of the H HDF5 library. And then afterwards, after setup by configure, it's also running Python setup by build. So this seems to take a while. Let's let it work on that while we look at the last exercise. So here, once we get a working H5Py installation, we are asked to make sure it works by running this small Python program, which uses H5Py to create an empty HDF5 uh, file. And we're then asked to check the result of running that Python script using the h5stat command. So for this, of course, we need to wait until the h5py installation finishes first. So let's complete this exercise as well before we continue to the next part, which is troubleshooting. If there are any questions, please raise them to me if they are worth answering during the tutorial. OK. 
okay, this H5Py installation completed. Did I actually do it the way I was supposed to? Well, I was supposed to install it in slash temp slash user, but let me ignore that for now, since it takes a couple of minutes to get this installed. Um, in this case, we should have the module available for loading already, since it was again installed in our home directory. So we can go ahead and load this module, assuming we don't have anything else loaded, that's fine. New module load h5py. And then we are asked to run this small Python script. So let me copy it. And create a file here. Let me use the AWS file browser for this. So here I use the plus here to create a new file. Copy paste the contents of the file. And when I do control S, it lets me save the file. I can give it a name and the location. I'll put it in the directory that we've mounted in the container image. And I'll name it test h5py.py and save it. Of course, you can also directly create the file here in the terminal using your favorite editor, whether it's Nano, Emacs, or Vim. Um, so the file should be here now. Since I have loaded the h5py module, I can assume h5py is available. So I should be able to run this Python script, let me check the Python version 382, which corresponds to the one for which H5Py was installed. So I can run the Python script using Python and the name of the Python script. That should create an empty .hdfi file for me. And then here I am asked to run the h5stat command on that to check it. Let me first make sure I have this available. This looks okay. The version looks a bit weird, but it's probably fine. I don't know how H5, uh, actually the version comes from HDF5 itself, not from H5Py. So that's why the version is different. We check which HDF5 module we have loaded. It should say the same version as H5 stat gives us, which is 1.10.6 indeed. So let's run h5 stat on empty.hdf5. And this gives us a whole bunch of useful output about this empty hdf5 file. So this seems to be working indeed. We have created a correct hdf5 empty file using this small Python script leveraging our h5py installation. That concludes this part of the exercises. There's a question that's being raised to me. Why use the trace option and not verbose? I guess with verbose, um, you mean logging the, or sending the output, the, sorry, sending the log output to the terminal. So there's a log to standard out option for that. Let me show you why not. So here we use dash dash trace, which makes it fairly easy to follow uh, what, what EasyBuild is doing, and particularly doing the build step for H5Py. If we do redo this, so we do rebuild to reinstall H5Py, even though it's already there, and we use log to standard out to get all the details on what EasyBuild is doing. This is why we typically don't use this. It generates a lot of output, a lot of details. Um, which is probably not what you're after. So this will overflow you with information, um, which may be useful to look at after the installation completes, but not while it's running. You can see there's a whole bunch of things going on here. We're getting warnings from Python. We're getting um, output from the build command. And this is just impossible to tell which is which. If we compare this with the trace output, it's a lot cleaner and manageable and intended for humans. So it does scroll a little bit. But when it pauses for a while, we can tell what it's doing. It's running a Python setup py configure command and so on. If you want to get the, all the details, you can actually check this log file. So let me copy this location. 
and do, 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 do. or actually let me push this to the background while it's still running and check this log file. So here we get the output of the command that is being run during the build step with all of its output. So if you do want to check on what this particular command is doing and which output it is generating, we can check for it like this. So using this part here, output logged in, produced by the trace command, we can check this. Let's bring this back to the foreground and let it finish. So we have the H5Py installation back. This completes the basic usage part. I'm not seeing many questions raised to me. So I think the other guys are doing a good job at keeping up with incoming questions. So let me move on.